Hello everyone, this one comes with some content warning, not suitable for children or the easily disturbed, that could just be said for me in general, um, because the depiction of horror elements, human, animal violence and death, abuse, abusive relationships, disturbing images, loud noises, flashing images, lights and more, individuals suffering from anxiety and depression, I am included in both of those, or certain fears, phobias, may not have a safe experience playing this game. Uh, okay, I will check the full list. Please take care of yourself. That's what I say to her. Yes, do that. That is a good thing to do. Um, I believe it's the about it said. Ah, oh, right, uh, anyway. Yes, this came with, like, a couple of text documents as well. There's one of them which is an endings guide, but I'm not actually going to click that. Uh, oh, it's there. Okay. Content warnings. I guess technically these are spoilers. Um... Oh my good god. Uh. He does have a seizure ward in there, so. Doesn't seem to have arachnophobia. Right, this is going to be a lot sadder than I thought. Um, oh dear. I just was here for a fun, happy time. So this game is called... Um, let me just go back. Uh, return. Do not take the cat home. I seen the name of the game and I was like, don't tell me what you do. It's your day off, but the weather is really bringing you down, among other things. But you're drawn to distant sound of something calling out to you. You follow it to a dark, lonely alley. In the back of the alley, in a cardboard box, is a cat. A very cute cat. What will you do? You, will you, selfishly crossed out, ignore it and enjoy your day off? Or you befriend it, only to abandon it anyway is crossed off? Or, you take it home with you? Surely you will, right? Right, let me say no to that face. Oh, oh my god, 32k plus words, 34 hours of gameplay depending on reading speed. Uh, <laughs> Jesus Christ. I don't think I know what I'm getting myself into here. Uh, okay. Let's do, let's do some. Let's do some. Preferences, can I... Right, well, here's the full list of spoilers. I'm not going to read them out. But I'm going to, I'm going to scroll slowly. Um, please check it out. Loud, sudden, or repeating noises. I don't like those either. Don't know what scophophobia is, but it's there. Thalassophobia. Timed gameplay. Ooh, old time. Yes, anyway, that's all those. You're not having a great day, as usual. Ah, oh, great. It's the first time in a while. That you felt like going out. In the middle of your walk, it starts to rain. Typical, but maybe that's just a sign you should have stayed home. Yeah, can I try again tomorrow, right? You turn to head home when... Meow. What was that? Only a few people around on the street, and one of them was meowing. Very strange. Makes sense due to the increase of missing persons around the area recently. Well, that and the weather. None of them react to the sound at all. Curiosity guiding your steps, you follow the sound to the entrance of a dark, dingy alleyway. You timidly enter the alley and walk forward. The ground dampened by the rain makes your steps sound louder and more confident than you actually feel. Finally, the source comes into view in the cold, dim light of the alley. At the end of the alley, a big cardboard box. Is a cat. I guess that should have been obvious. Interesting looking cat. But yellow eyes shine like gold amongst the dark sea of its black fur. I see a good boy. I see a good boy. It puts its front paws up on the edge of the box and looks up at you. So cute. And it definitely knows it. Never had much of an opinion one way or the other about cats before. But if they're all like this one, it's a shock they haven't already found their way to rule the world. You don't think you'd mind bowing down to a feed lane overlord. You look around the alley with a small frown. 
Who leaves cats in a cardboard box these days anyway? Wouldn't they just jump out, leave the box eventually? Cat doesn't answer you, because as a cat. Also doesn't do as you suggest to leave the box. It's just looking at you, waiting for you to make the next move. I am taking the cat home. This is now my cat. You know what? You reach into the box, pick up the cat, we'll take it out in front of you. Why not? Meow. You're all alone and well. I'm kind of in the same boat to myself, so you bring the cat close. Didn't realise it was shivering until just then. But it slowly breathes easier as it presses into your chest. Why not stick together, right? At least a little while. You think? A little while will probably be more like a day. You're responsible and take it to a shelter tomorrow, but for now, let's get out of the rain. You stop by a small local pet store for some cat food and head back home. You live in a modest apartment. One bedroom, one bathroom, one you living in it. So it feels weird having another living being inside it after so long, even if it's just a cat. After locking the front door and placing the cat on the floor, you watch for a moment as cu it curiously explores the new environment. Leaving the feline to its own devices, you set about making both of you some dinner. Take the can of cat food and open up on the tabletop. Put some cat food on the saucer and click your tongue to call the cat over. Perks up at your beckoning and rushes over. Looks at the plate of food and completely ignores it. No hunger, I guess. You try not to let it annoy you. The cat doesn't understand the concept of money to appreciate that you spent hard earned cash on it. It's just a cat. I'll leave you here if you're hungry later. The cat rubs its body against your legs with a purr. You smile. That's enough of a thanks for you. Follows you to the kitchen. You start your own dinner. Say that you have enough ingredients for a sandwich bread toasted, meal mustard spread. Turkey and cheese and lettuce perfectly placed. Tomato sliced. Yow! Once did you get your finger with a knife on the knife, slicing the tomato? Stupid. If you're a little embarrassed with such a blunder and sigh, tossing a knife onto the cutting board. Put out to the bathroom for a bandage, but the cat holds, hops up to the counter. It sniffs at the knife and meows almost pointedly at you. Don't worry, I'm alright, it was just a... You watch the cat starts to... Lippy, 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 lippy. Uh, Lick lightly, but enthusiastically, at the blood on the knife. At your blood. You're so shocked by the time you come to your senses, the knife's been completely nicked clean. The cat sits back, staring at you. You feel a little uneasy. Sure, cats are meat-eating predators, but that was a little weird. Right? Not really. Sure, you're no cat expert. That's definitely not something an ordinary cat would do. No, they would. Right? Meow. <coughs> Regardless, you're not about to abandon a cat need, but still rain that side. After all your efforts. You're going to take it to the shop tomorrow anyway. What's one night of awkwardness, weird or not? It's a cat. The rest of the evening, unfortunately, goes downhill from there. Even after covering up your fingers cut with a bandage, the cat keeps trying to lick your wound. <laughs> while you're eating your sandwich, while you're cleaning the kitchen, while you're trying to watch TV, gently push away every time, you're starting to get worried at the strange behaviour. What if it got a taste of your blood and thinks you're food now? Not sure what you'll do, it starts to get more aggressive. Keep thinking about the cat food sitting in the corner, untouched. Meow. Enough. Shove it away a little more force last time out of annoyance. You feel bad immediately, but before you can do anything, the cat meows sharply at you and dashes off around the corner into the hall. You sigh. At this point, you're just worried it's going to take a bite out of you in your sleep. Maybe a vet will have an idea on how to calm it down. You can only hope. You don't have any other options left than tossing the cat out in the rain. After finding the number of a local vet, you pick up your landline and... The lights just went out. And dabby dabulous. The rain must have knocked out the power. Check your cell phone only to find that it's out of batteries. It must have forgotten to charge it before leaving out earlier. The outing had been so spur of the moment, it had no doubt messed with your usual routine. Grab a flashlight and turn it on. It's quiet. Too quiet. Did the rain stop? But then, why did the power go out? You look outside. The sky is pitch black. What time is it? You turn to check the clock. <laughs> Is that saying help, kill, help, kill, help, kill, help, kill? The cat sits on top of your digital clock, staring at you. <laughs> Thinking now you realise the clock shouldn't be working at all with the power outage, and the numbers are lit up and going haywire. The cat stares at you, completely still. I think it was a statue if you didn't know any better. Not giving off any indication that it's alive. It's not blinking, not even breathing, but it's eyes. This isn't normal. You're afraid. 
You went around but you're afraid of letting the cat out of your sight. Instead of tossing the cat out after all. But, since the thought entered your head, you feel a sharp urge to vomit. Those eyes. Its eyes hold you still, even with your flashlight trained on it. Pupils are large, round inky pits. The flashlight flickers. The cat is gone. Fear of me to look at your mind. The silence punctuated with the rapid pumping of blood in your heart. As overwritten as your ears slowly start to pick up the sound of static. There's a clock working with no power. You don't know why such a question matters at the moment. It feels as if having the answer will make sense out of everything that's happening. That the order will be restored. No answers come to mind. You back away from the clock. Feels as if the air itself closed tightly and abruptly in response. Like a predator prepared to pounce and waiting. Waiting for your next move. But you're afraid to move. You're afraid to, whoops, to take, to even take a breath. Can't stay still forever, right? Whatever's watching you can already feel its impatience. It's too eager. You don't know how you know this. But you can sense it clearly as if it had whispered. Sizzle. Right into your ear. Right into your soul. It won't let you wait it out. Not that you could, even if you did. You couldn't stay here. You have to run. With a sudden, with, with this thought, a sudden primal instinct awakens on you. Making your tear yourself into a hasty burst of movement, of action, but still weak from the fear's grip on your mind. Your legs tangle around under, your, under you in your haste and you fall to the ground. Ow, my face. A sharp pain explodes in the centre of your foot. First, you think you've broken your ankle. Something warm and wet trickles in the length of your foot, pulling underneath it. You hear the sound of the metal scraping on tiles skidding across the floor, as if it had been kicked. Wounded from your fall, you look up and it does see the object glinting in a strange light coming in from the outside. The light pouring from your now open front door. Thoughts of how, when, who and what. In regards to your inexplicably open door, screeches to a halt. As your brain finally identifies the metallic object you've been staring at. It's a Kenneth. Kitchen Kenneth. Still tinted red from your early blunder, but that's not right. It was licked completely clean by the... You got dryly at the pain in your foot. Barely have time to wonder how the knife ended up in the living room floor to be stepped on, instead of resting your cutting board in the kitchen where you left it. You spy something in the darkness just beyond the knife. It spies right back at you. A pair of glowing, golden eyes coming forward as the cat emerges from the shadows into the light of your doorway. Tasty blood. It pads lightly over the knife, as if skipping in delight. Nom, 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 Bends down to have the blood dripping off the table. Senses slowly begin to overwhelm you. Chill of the air as it starts to suffocate you under its weight. No, that's probably shock from the cut in your foot, but okay. The sound of your shaky breath discordant against the static now piercing your skull, the dryness of your tongue spreading to your throat. Speaking of which, actually, I'm thirsty. The incomprehensible sight of the stray you'd taken in, licking away at the kitchen knife once again, completely clean. Scent of blood fresh from the wound on your foot. Blood. Golden eyes light up so for once your sudden realisation. Blood. You're hurt. Your foot is bleeding. You're bleeding. You're bleeding. The cat barely moves. Shoulders twitching as if considering to act of pouncing forward. But you're already on your feet and out the door. You run, rather limp, limp down the empty street. The sky is black and bleeding red. There's a strange light emitting from nowhere that casts everything else in white. The houses, the trees, the road, even you. Everything. Except your blood. It's just a panic attack, really, isn't it? You can just barely glimpse at the bloody imprints of your injured foot. Leaves in the wake of and with every impact it makes on the ground. It hurts. But you can't stop. You don't stop. Not when the shadows grow around you. Not when you feel the gaze eyes all over you. Now, when the road ahead of you is darkened by a long shadow of something behind you, even then, you don't stop running because... If that's the cat right there ahead of you, then... What in the world is behind you? You would look. The cat's the safe one. Huh. Interesting. Very, very interesting. Ending zero, it begins. Pardon? No, let's not be opening that. That was a silly...
Go away, game. Go away. Exit. So that was ending zero. So that one just always got to happen. is what it's wanting me to do. Oh, ending zero finished prologue, right. Okay, so I need to continue on from that. Right, I get you, game. I get you. You're walking, right, of course. First time you felt like going out. And you're actually glad that you did. Well, it was perfect. Good sign, right? Maybe luck's finally starting to turn around. <coughs> Sorry, excuse me. Tentatively allow yourself to feel excited for the possibilities of where you could go or what you could do. Maybe even who you could meet. So deep in thought did you almost miss it? Meow. What was that? Curious that you have seen that. Suddenly Dylan just managed to reach down the other side. You timidly enter the alleyway and walk forward. Those gravel scared breeze in the ground soften your steps. Meow, meow. Finally the sound source comes into view in the warm, almost ethereal light of the alley. At the end of the alley is a big cardboard box. Kitty, is a cat. Guess that should have been obvious. That she's doing a blap. Interesting looking cat. Big yellow eye shine like gold amongst the dark sea of its blackened fur. Front paws up on the edge of the box as it looks up at you. Meow. You look so familiar, right? And again, as a cat, not many ways for a standard black cat to look after all. This one sure is okay, though. It's not glaring at you or hissing at you for getting close to it like other stray cats have in the past. Just sitting there patiently waiting for you to do something. You're coming home with me. Meow. Why not? Right? Meow. Barely reach out your arms for the cat, eagerly leaps into them and climbs onto your shoulders. What's its head is nuzzling your temple and blue that one. Can help it smell the cat's enthusiasm. Let's get you out of here. Lipper. On the way home, you briefly consider getting cat food. But that would be a waste of time. What? Sure, I got the odd feeling to move on. Live in a modest apartment. Feels weird having another living being inside after so long, even if it's just a cat. Locking the front door and placing the cat on the floor, you wait for it to walk and explore a new environment. It simply sits and looks at you expectantly. I'm going to do something with a cat. Um, pet feeding. Clean up. Realize a cat isn't exactly clean. Not surprised. But up until you brought it home, it's been sitting in a dirty old box in an alley full of scattered garbage for who knows how long. You heard that cats can clean them, keep themselves clean, but maybe this one of those times a little human help couldn't hurt. You head to the bathroom, set things up. Trying to remember how to wash a cat. Definitely no expert. You think the best way to get a cat clean would be carefully. I think that's the way to go. Cats aren't always fond of water, so you doubt it'll be a fan of an excessive amount of it. Pick up the cat, place it gently in the sink before turning on the water. Cat startled, but ultimately doesn't try to run away. Nice. Scrub the kitty. Oh my god, that's so cute. Lather your hands with some soap. Carefully give it a thorough half scrub, half massage. After a few minutes, you rinse the cat completely and gather up the blanket drying it. Take a brush and carefully run it through the cat's fur. Seems like it's in heaven as you brush it. Some hairs are sticking out, but you don't mind. In fact, quite a lot of fur sticking out you. Tried to brush away, but it won't come off. Guess you're up next for a bath yourself. Meow. Try to ignore the fur and finish the cat quickly. More hair keeps sticking out you. Your hands, your arms. Before you realise it, you're covered in fur that won't come off. Thick enough that you tried to just yank it off, but owie. Pain lasts through the spot you tugged at. Upon closer inspection, you see that the hair is growing. Growing out of you. You can actually feel it now. Growing out of the back of your neck. Your face. Your eyes. Your tongue. Ugh. Growing inside your throat. As you clamp, you start to choke on the thickening fur in your esophagus. Cat leans up to lap at the fur growing on your forehead, grooming your hair as thoroughly as you did for it earlier. Purr, purr. 
You think it'd be sweet if you weren't currently losing air. Still, it feels nice at least. To looked after and cared for in some way. Even if it's just for a little while longer. You can't care for grooming is the last thing you feel. For you're no longer able to breathe. Self care buddies. I sure can I we're, we're taking you home. I'm gonna do something with a cat again. Um so cleaning is a bad idea. I'm just gonna pet it. Not every day you have access to a cute fluffy animal. What else could it be doing to pet it to your heart's content? Sit on the floor of your living room, click your tongue to call it over. Brrf. Okay, it dashes over you immediately, claiming onto your lap. You just want some attention. Alright, alright. Carefully pet the cat. A rub behind the ear. A scratch under the chin. A smooth sweep along the back. Purr, purr, purr. Good. Keep petting the cat in your lap. Join the bonding time together. Cat starts to get restless after a while. Let's do something else. Um, play. Poor thing's probably bored stiff, sitting in that box all day. Just watching crowds of people walk by them, ignoring them. Can't just leave them alone as soon as you're home. A little interspecies socialising won't kill you, right? You want to play? Meow. Okay. Hmm. Cats are curious creatures by nature. Also natural hunters, sort of. When I pass time by letting a cat hunt after something it can never quite understand. Sounds a little mean when you think of it like that. Not like the cat will know anyway. Ignorance is bliss. So you dig at your old laser pointer for your long, dreaded days of group presentations. You flip it on and see that even after this time, the batteries still work. You get a little kick out of aiming them at a mirror hanging in the living room as it reflects off the glass. Making a little red dot appear in any. Cat cautiously walks over, stopping every few steps to cast a look of suspicion at you. When it finally reaches you, it lightly presses a paw on your knee, like it's trying to catch the red, the dot of red light, as casually as possible. Hmm. You want just to hold back a chuckle, not like it really matters. Cat isn't paying attention to you, it's entirely focused on the light now resting on top of its paw. Move the light a little higher above your knee. Cat reacts immediately trying to pin the light down. In the next second, you've moved it to the floor. Cat chuckly follows a tempting more energetic bounce when you shift the red dot. Over here. Over there. Over there. By the couch. On the couch. Meow meow. Cat might be ignoring you, but he's enjoying yourself. It's been a while since you've laughed this much. You're laughing so much, in fact, you accidentally shift the red dot onto a lamp beside the couch. Oh no! In the haste to get the light, the cat leaps onto the lamp, sending them both to the ground. Oh no, kitty, I'm sorry. Cat sitting in the middle of a former lamp's broken shards, back hunched, head whipping around back and forth as if in a panic. Quickly turn off the laser point and rush over. Are you hurt? We start to pick up the cat, check for injuries when. Yeah, it's going to claw at you because it's all excited. Cat switches at you, claws extended. Backs up, twitches away, making frantic half turns in various directions as if looking for something or waiting for something to appear. It really hurt, you know. You hold a hand with a scratch close to your chest. It's bleeding. It's not too big. More annoyed than anything, but... Immediately, your annoyance starts to bleed into concern. You watch your jock as the cart starts to run around, tearing the carpet sofa your armchair. You want it to stop, but you're afraid of getting in the middle of its rampage. It's never calling effect for advice on how to calm it down, but for some reason, you feel like that wouldn't be a good idea. What happened to you, is it? An idea comes to you, or rather a realisation. You grasp a laser pointer, aiming safely towards the floor in the middle of the living room. Thinking, hoping, that the cat would calm down and find what it was looking for. Turn on the laser pointer. Cat's reaction is immediate. Oh, you screwed up. The span of mere seconds, you watch as the cat spies the red dot from its perch on a shredded armchair. Leaps high into the air. Changes in the air. Scrunch. Slams down the dot on the floor with a weight and force that shakes the whole apartment. Maybe even the whole building. You wonder dazedly how none of the other tenants rush to complain about the noise. But as you stare at the sight in front of you, the cat's grown in size, its eyes bulging and glowing, tail thrashing, teeth enlarged, burged and covered in light all alarmingly in a bubbling froth. Giant claws rip and shred through the carpet, through the floor tiles, 
and even below them. The ravens are trying to get at the red dot. Your hands are shaking. You don't know what to do. You feel trapped. You have to get away. Get it away from you. Go slowly back towards the door. The light moves with you. Instinctively flick the light away. You, you flick the light away. This way and that. The cat is stampeding after you. Crush. So fast. Smashing through the TV, breaking the couch in half. Too fast. Bulldozing through the wall into the hallway. Fresh. A chance. Your turn. Your turn. Waiting to bolt out the door and never come back. In your haste, you forgot something. You forgot several somethings. Laser pointer. You forget the laser pointer. Grip like a lifeline in your hand. You forget the mirror. Still miraculously hanging on the wall next to the hallway. Laser right reflecting off of it. Putting a small, glowing red dot on the back of your head. As you reach the door, you forget it's locked. Don't have a chance to turn around before the cat lunges all the way across the room at you. Want to shreds before you can even blink? Targeted. Okay. I'm going to pet the kitty again. Um. Right, so the laser pointer went a fucking squiff. Playing with it seems to excite it. Uh, let's pet the cat again. You feel so calm. Repetitive action soothing your usually overworking mind. You keep petting. Cat leans away from you, the next head patch trying to leap out of your lap. Yeah, let's not bother the cat. That's not very nice. I guess we'll feed it. Cat looks hungry as you try to feed it. You regret not stopping for a day, unless you don't have much left. Grocery shopping day is for tomorrow, after all. Head to the kitchen and click your tongue, ensuring the cat follows after you. Leap nimbly onto the kitchen counter and watches you as you search for meal options. Find some things you expect. Tuna. Meatloaf. What is that? Tightly sealed Tupperware at the bottom shelf of the fridge. You don't recognise it. Phil Loader is leaking from the container. Everything than safe can't be safe for human consumption. Uh, gas seems excited. Practically salivating over it. Still, you're the caretaker here. That's what it wants. Mystery food. Is this a good idea? Marmarl. Fine, if that's what you want. You open a container and... <laughs> barely managed to keep from throwing up. Just barely. The stench is overwhelming. <coughs> yeah, yeah, give me a minute. I just to look at the contents of the container, but... You can't understand what you're supposed to be looking at. Everything's just meshed. What exactly everything consists of is a mystery. You're more than happy to keep unsolved. Shapes, sizes, textures. Not the colour though. All of it is the same colour. Most unfortunate looking shade of grey you've ever seen. Tinted with a nauseatingly wet green film over the top. That's supposed to warm it up. You don't really know how to serve it. And utensils or plate that touches it is getting thrown out. No exceptions. Your hands are going to be scrubbed with soap and hot water to within an inch of their lives after this. Say against putting this crap in your microwave. You doubt it'll taste or smell any better warm. Not want to hold it anymore, you shake your head and practically toss the container next to the cat on the counter. Cat enthusiastically dies for the toxic looking sludge, sniffing at it as if savouring the scent. You turn to the fridge and close it. You've lost your appetite. Bet out to the bathroom and wash your hands for the next hour or so when. Ow! A sharp pain in your foot causes you to stumble. Catch yourself in the kitchen stink and look down to see at the tip of your sock is. red. And the red is slowly spreading to the rest of your sock. Are you bleeding? Quickly reach down and pull off the sock to see the damage. Your toe is gone. It's just gone. 
just a stump is left in its place, steadily leaking blood onto the floor. Clumsily you step back as if it would help you get away from what you were seeing. Blood trail simply follows your movements. Have to call 911. Phone. Where's the... What's happening to me? Look over to find the cat still eating. Completely unbothered by your suffering. Not bothering to try and stop the blood dribbling... Not bothering to try and stop the blood dribbling from your mouth. Keep watching in a daze. The cat happily chews the gross piece of... Wait, that's... Look more closely at the food the cat's jaws. Looks familiar. It looks like... Ah. Gray can even think to down the stop it. The cat dives into the container again. Bites a place that kind of looks like a... <laughs> my penis! Labs on the floor, clutching it. I was joking, game. Right there. Blood street tiles crying. Something, something inside you just... Blur. Blood pours from deep within you. Whatever it was, felt important. And now it's gone too. It hurts. It hurts so much. Stop, <laughs> boys. We could try to reach in the cat at the counter above you. Resin blurs from the effort, the pain, the tears from. I'm dead now. Your eyes, your eyes! Limply back onto the floor, you're leaking blood all over. Foot, mouth, insides, eye sockets of your life fading away. That's fine. If it means not feeling the pain of losing another part of you, then. Hopefully, the cat will take its time eating your eyeballs and give you time to just, just. You are what you eat. Well, as usual, that got dark. Guess that's the name of the game. Oh, skip it a bit. Take it home. What can go wrong? Nothing changing here. Do something with the cat. Let's pet the cat. Let's do something else. Uh, God damn. Let's go... What, what can I do alone? Clean the apartment. You decide that even if it's your day off, it doesn't mean you should be completely unproductive. You know you have a guest now. You really shouldn't put off your chores. Best to get them done when you're in the mood to do so. So now, to get dressed, roll up your sleeves, and work on cleaning the apartment. At least, you try to. So you've lived in them. Like kitchen counter. You. Okay, you don't make your bed. Who does that anyway? You should still make your bed, buddy. You no know, so matter how much you clean up, you keep finding more messes than you started. If you go over the cat, you suspect it might be the culprit behind the mystery. Time <laughs> you have to check on or catch it in the act. You also need it napping in the living room. <laughs> keep cleaning, but the cat or something keeps leaving more and more mess this week. <laughs> Gonna keep cleaning. More and more mess, and more and more, and you finally stop to look around you. Don't recognize your home. Pills junk everywhere. Do you even own this much stuff? You don't remember even buying or receiving most of it. Towers pile over you, you feel claustrophobic. The stench of garbage is overwhelming. It made your hands feeling raw from all the cleaner fluid you've been using. Your eyes still burn from the bleach. You need some air. You need to get out of here. You hear a crash and see a teacup. You're certain you don't own smashed on the floor. You come to see the cat perched on top of a teetering pile of china and kitchen appliances. It carefully nudges another <laughs> sending it careening to the ground. But you don't even flinch as it shatters it. Instead, <laughs> you're laughing. It's hilarious. The tears start running down your face. And it was you. You did this, didn't you? Pick up a large piece of ceramic from broken teacups. Didn't you? No, don't throw it at the cat. Pale sways. It sways. It's falling. You deserve this. It's falling towards you. <laughs> you can't move. You're buried. Pale fell on top of you. Broken charge of fine china and sharp utensils are piercing your skin. Your organs. Your bones feel loose and limp. Crushed under the heavy appliances. Warm liquid pulls under you. With the last strength, you listen to the cat pads over before laying down, purring sleepily. Yeah, and that sounds pretty good. Mm. Yeah, I'm taking a cat home with me. I'll pet it. 
pet the hell out of this cat. I'm sure nap was one of the options. Take a nap. Yeah. Without tired from the events of the day, making life-changing choices like committing to a responsibility of caring for another living creature really wears you out. You can definitely use a nap. Head to your room, get dressed in your pyjamas before you decide to grab a glass of water from the kitchen. Head to your room for a much needed nap. Meow. Whoa! Well, if the cats race past you and open the door, jump in the middle of the bed. <laughs> it takes time heating the sheets before settling down and closing its eyes. That was fast. You frown thoughtfully. Now it remains on it, you find yourself really craving a nap in your own bed. It's no way you're settling for sleeping on a couch. Certainly not the armchair, which means you should. Sleep next to the cat, obviously. The harm's sharing a bed, right? Both have had a long day. Try to carefully avoid jostling the cat as you lay down. It immediately scoots over and curls up against you anyway. Sweet dreams. You feel like you slept for a long time. You feel a warm weight on your back, but you don't see the... Oh, mystery solved. You feel comfortable? Consider getting up, but as soon as the thought enters your head, your mind fills with static and deep sense of disapproval. Okay, then. A cat, just by your attempt at movement, needs painfully at your back before settling down again and falling back asleep. You fall back into slumber, too. It's night. You want to get up. Ah! Claws then can dig into your back like a warning. Tomorrow night, then? It's morning. You've been late for work. Cat doesn't budge. You don't even try this time. Close your eyes and drift off. It's the next day. Since the last several days. Or has it been weeks? Or longer? You're not quite sure. You're hungry. You don't know how long you've been lying down. You feel sore in your back but also in your stomach, arms and face, everywhere. You can't remember your last meal, last time you drank anything. You've been sleeping all this time, but you feel exhausted, more tired than you think you've ever felt in your life. It feels like a giant hand is pressing you into the bed. You can't remember the last time you even considered moving. Somehow you know, you needed to go back to sleep anyway. Everything will be fine if you just go back to sleep. You think you're hallucinating when the cat finally stirs. Meow. Stretches languidly before hopping off your back. Your feet padding through the still open bedroom door, steps fading down the hall. You don't open your eyes. You don't move. You're afraid you don't remember how. You're afraid the static will return if you try. But you eventually do try. I've had this before, man. Try to prop yourself up on your arm, thinner than you've ever seen it, thinner than you think should be possible. Crack. Your arm snaps under the weight of your body and crumbles to dust on the bed sheets. Doesn't hurt the slightest. As if your nerves have dried up and become useless as, well, as useless as you feel in general. How long have you been laying in bed? Oh, this, okay, right, this is just... You don't have much time to think about it. Your feel attempt at sitting up sends you tumbling over the side of the bed like a rag doll. I think you're probably closer to being a ceramic doll as your body shatters on contact with the floor. Your head rolls towards the door, letting you watch as the rest of your... Strown body parts crack and crumble and turn to broken ruin as your consciousness begins to fade. Kitty! Cat strolls into view, poking and prodding at the remains of your brittle limbs. Bad kitty. You think your jaw might have snapped off earlier as well. Almost as if sensing your attention, the cat walks over to you. Well, your head at least. You watch with your final conscious set, And you watch with your final conscious seconds as it lays down, curling its body around you. Oh. It feels warm. Well, maybe another nap couldn't hurt. Alright, one bear. You're coming home with me, kitty. I'm petting the cat because I have to pet the cat. That is what you do with a cat. Let's try another one. We're taking a nap. We're still taking a nap. Um, Move the cat. Tentatively nudge the cat and try to make it move on its own. Doesn't budge in the slightest. We shall let more firmly this time. You will sleep on your own bed. Calms its yellow eye and slays it up to look at you. It's its voice deeper than before. Move the cat. Seriously, last chance. You really want to do this? Yes. You move forward. Ready to shove the cat. Crash. Thrown back with some invisible force and crash into the dresser before falling to the ground. 
Wind's knocked out of you. Look what it is. You don't quite comprehend what you're seeing. Strong, swirling wind is picked up, throwing items all over the place. As if a miniature hurricane is just taking place in your room. Right there in the centre of it all is the kitty. Hovering in the air above the bed. Its eyes open, glowing like molten lava. You watch as a vortex rips open in the centre of your bed. And panic as the swirling wind turns into a vacuum, drawing you towards the bed. Nails catch and tear. She desperately tries to cling to the carpet, floorboards, every piece of furniture within your reach. Bloody fingers slipping clumsily on every surface. Oops, I skipped something there. As you touch the vortex, your body starts to disintegrate. Tiny particles of your body separating and floating into nothing. Last thing you see is the cat landing nimbly on the bed, kneading at your sheets. Board curls up back to sleep. Do yeah to disturb. <laughs> hey! You're coming home with me, kitty. Okay, first things first. Pet the cat. And these options seem to lead to... Well, I guess I haven't tried the other one. Have some tuna. I ain't touching that. Tuna. Cats like fish, right? Shrugging, take the tuna out of the can, and the meatloaf for yourself. Put frankly... You put the frankly... Ominous container back in the fridge. Cat looks disappointed. Tough. He does buzz over with that weird whatever it is later. When you you open the tuna and spin it into a small saucer, put the saucer in a kitchen counter next to the cat. You don't think you should be encouraged to eat up there. Listen, the, the cats can't eat too much tuna, okay? You can only give them, like, if you're going to get, like, half of a normal can because they can give them mercury poison a lot easier than it can poison us. So if you give a cat tuna too often, it can make them really sick, so just watch out for that. But you figure it'll make up for electing not to feed it the toxic goop. Meow. Cat looks like it finds the tuna. Acceptable. You take it. Eat up, kitty. Cat digs into its meal. You go about heating up the meatloaf. Second time you hear... <coughs> Turn to see the plate is completely empty. Whoa, that's quick. You need to pace yourself. <coughs> what the? Baffled is the cat continues to hiccup, causing little bubbles to float out of its mouth. Okay. That's okay. You can process this. Not completely out of the realm of what's possible. Right? Best not to think too hard about it. The room is filled with floating bubbles. The cat releases a tiny bubble for yawning and laying down right in the counter. I'm glad you enjoyed it. The bubbles haven't left the room or popped. It seemed pretty resilient. What? What's that? One of the bubbles floats closer to you. See, it's actually something inside. Tiny, furry, fish. <laughs> this is getting weird. Can't help but marvel at the impossible wonder in front of you. Lift your hand. Pop. Finger towards the bubble. Carefully press it against the surface. Ah, you bastard. The fish inside lashes out you, viciously sinking tiny fangs into your finger. Doesn't hurt that much at first, but then... Pain starts to climb to your finger to the rest of your hand. Past your wrist. Some kind of venom? Fling your arm around and attempt to dislodge the fish, but... Ah, uh, you actually knock your arm to several bubbles floating around. More tiny ravenous fle fish latch onto your flesh. You stumble back out of pain and a sudden bout of dizziness, only to bump into more bubbles. More fish. It hurts. You're getting dizzy. You've got to get out. You deliriously try to stumble out of the kitchen. The entire room is filled with deadly bubbles. By the time you collapse on the ground, you're absolutely covered in tiny, angry, biting fish. Your legs, your torso, your arms, your face. The pain is unbearable. You can feel it in your skin, and your teeth, and your eyes, and your hair, and... And it's so consuming that you can't feel yourself convulsing or crying. You don't black out. Your eyes are still rolling up in your skull when you grasp, gasp your last breath. Fish out of water. You're coming with me, kitty. Okay, right. Pet the kitty. Okay, um, we'll try the meatloaf then. There has to be some safe options. I'm saying that as if I don't have a guide for this game. Right, go, go away. I know. Meatloaf. 
get the feeling you can't look too impressed with anything that comes out of a can. That and it's not healthy for it. Not about to feed it whatever the heck that toxic sludge is. It's settled. Tuna sandwich for you and a leftover wheat loaf for your feeling guest. You ignore the cat's disappointing meal as you put the weird container back in the fridge and dispose of it later. You warm up the meatloaf in the microwave. Place the now warm meatloaf in the saucer next to the cat on the counter. You don't think you should be encouraging it to eat up there, but you figure it'll make up for electing not to feed the toxic group it wanted. Cat looks like it finds the meatloaf. Interesting. Works for you. Eat up, kitty. Cat digs into its meal. You go about searching for some bread for your tuna sandwich. So distracted by your search, the only just barely hear is blood. Turn around and see the meatloaf. <laughs> There's only one, maybe two bites taken out of it. More alarmingly, there seems to be a red trail of something leading away from where the cat had been sitting and off the counter towards the living room. Is that blood? No, kitty! You jump at the strange income from in the corner, further into your apartment. Attempt to steal your nerves. Taking a breath, you walk around the corner to head into the living room. Splat. Step in something warm. Oh, no, 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 no. You risk the urge to vomit, step away from the trail of... You follow the trail in the living room and see it leads to a hall. It's getting louder. It's definitely in the hall. You feel like you can hear your heartbeat. You hope whatever in the hall can't. Body shakes as you feel yourself step forward and forward and forward and forward. You peek round the corner. Nothing. Nothing there. Walk out front of the hall and see the trail leads the way down to the end of it. There's nothing there. You don't quite feel relief, but at least... Plop. Feel something warm and wet drip onto your cheek. Something very warm. You swipe your shaking hand across it to pull back. See, you're covering something. You look up. See, we can only be described as meat. The entire ceiling of the hallway is covered in a thick, undulating, writhing layer of pulsing meat. At its centre is a single glowing eyeball, frantically rolling around in every direction. It's alright mate, it's just a hairball. Till it lands squarely on you. Take a step back, despite desperate to escape the hallway. To escape this thing, but... Where you can scream, meaty tendrils shoot out and grab you. Let me go! Pulls you up and into a pair of slowly opening jaws, and then crunch. Episode well, ending nine leftovers. Okay. <sighs> oh my God! I, I kind of looked at it. Oh my god, there's, there's, there's fucking 39 endings. <sighs> Seems like there's a true ending after 39. I have not been paying attention to what I've been doing enough to do all of these. I want to try. So is there just... Just no way to get a good ending with a kitty cat? Like, none at all? The kitty. Scratching on the cat's chin, it bites your fingers. It might be bleeding, but it barely hurts. Word of a warning. Wow. Cat struggles in your hold, watching closely. Keep petting. Ah. The cat bites off your finger. It hurts. You're definitely bleeding now, but for some reason, you can't stop. You don't know what it is. It's far softer than you realised. You think that it would be... You think it would be shining in the faint light of your living room, but as if the darkness of the cat's black coat sucking in all the illumination around it, rendering it completely null, you're drawn into it, somehow holding a deep dark abyss right in your lap. It seems calm on her, munching on your severed finger. The stump between your thumb and middle finger is leaking. But you keep petting. Fred that your blood will ruin its fur, but the cat doesn't seem to mind. Time passes. It's dark out now. Soft as the fur is, your palm has started to feel raw and damp under the constant friction from your petting. Think faintly, maybe you've had enough. 
just have to lift your hand and in a flash, swipe. Your entire hand is separated from your wrist, flops onto your lap beside the cat. The cat claws on its front right claw gl glisten in a crimson liquid. You don't feel it for a moment, but then your body tenses, anticipating the pain as you blink, as you blankly watch the cat, like the bloody palm of your severed hand. It really, really hurts. And the cat looks up at you. You feel compelled to keep petting. You're reluctant. You're also afraid of what will happen if you don't heed the call. What will you lose next if you resist? You're hurt for your insistent pet Nelly. You know you've been hurt for trying to stop, defies all logic, but that's what scares you. There's no reasoning with such reasoning with such fickle whims. You'll feebly try to raise your uninjured hand to pet the cat, but it stiffens, golden golden eyes glinting dangerously. Well, all right then. You raise your bleeding stump as you resume petting to the best of your ability. You pet, and you bleed. You pet, and you bleed. You pet, and you bleed. You pet, you... Personal boundaries. Those are important. You come in with me, kitty. Mm, I think we should pet the cat. <laughs> uh, right, none of the food options were fine. Let's see. Yarn. Every moving cartoon involving cats you watched in childhood, it is to believe that then you can deduce with almost absolute certainty cats freaking love yarn. Probably. You can have some yarn from an old box in the hallway closet that's filled with knickknacks and various abandoned hobbies. Consider just handing the ball of bright red yarn over to the cat and supervising from the side. That'd defeat the idea of playing together, wouldn't it? Cut off a decent length of string from the ball of yarn, go back to the living room. Cat's resting on the floor. He's not asleep, but it looks up at you as you enter the living room. You feel it could doze off right then and there. You fix that. Smirk a little, confident with your surprise. Let a piece of yarn dangle just above the floor, pinch between your thumb and index finger. Sudden shift the cat's demeanor makes your heart start to beat a little faster. Posture has barely changed at all. Just a subtle shift of the head and ears. Slight tension in the so shoulders. Sharpness in the gaze that locks onto the yarn dangling an inch above the floor. The cat could still pass as being almost relaxed, calm. Yet the air is thick with its eagerness to lunge forward. Waiting for the right moment to strike. You'll just witness the awakening of the perfect predator. Almost afraid of what happened when you make the first move. But it will be you who makes the first move. Take a deep breath, relax your shoulders, and... Swipe! <laughs> Yoink! Cat lunged instant, you wiggle the yarn, but you're faster. It completely misses you, flick your wrist, making the yarn recoil out of its reach like a terrified snake. Having overshot the landing in its eagerness, the cat stumbles, looks around shocked at its failed attack. You generously click your tongue to help reorient it. Cat whips its head around at the sound. Slightly like taken aback by the intensity of its stare on the yarn, but you persist. You wiggle the yarn again encouragingly, and yes, maybe a little tauntingly. This time the cat anticipates your yarn dodge upwards and leaps to swipe at it. You're already one step ahead, helping the yarn to dance gracefully out of reach once more. You can do it. It's a little condescending, but you can't seem to help it. For some reason, it feels a little good, knocking the feline down a peg or two. It seems to be enjoying itself, you hope. You keep going. High five. High five. High five. Cat's move have gotten aggressive. It's getting frustrated. You could swear it nearly took a shot at your eye last time. It jumped so high and erratically. You've been keeping the yarn in constant motion, afraid to slow down. Your wrist is getting tired. Cat doesn't seem to be losing any energy, though. It's like it's getting faster. Your wrist finally cramps sharply. Making you lose control of the arm's motion as the tip of it rushes lightly against your stomach. Ow. Pain rips low across your torso, into your torso. Blood pours out of your mouth. 
In a daze, you look down to see red blooming slowly at the bottom of your shirt. Around the tears in the fabric. Watch as thick ropes of something pour out from under your shirt to a bloody heap on the floor. A single red streak of rope hangs from you, connecting you to all that mess. Now those of you are, you come to the ground and topple over to your side. Your vision is going bloody, but... No, bad kitty, those are my intestines. You can just make it the shape of something small and deep. Inky black as it walks over and inspects your oh god the intestines before it starts to giddily roll around in a mass of your bloody insides next to you. Darkness falls over you. The cat sounds happy. Now unsensically you wonder where the yarn has gone, but there's really no need to worry about that. The cat seems content with the next best thing. At the end of your rope. I think we should take the cat home. I also think we should pet the cat. Seems like a good idea. Uh, okay, um, all three options for feed were shite. Whoops. Hide and seek. Can't see why this will go wrong. Not quite sure how this is going to work. I can't even understand the concept of the game, let alone. One with rules like hide and seek. Yeah, just pick up the cat, turn away from. You pick up the cat and turn him away from you before hiding behind the armchair. It was certain the cat must have turned to look at you while you were hiding. Out of confusion, at least, if nothing else. Meryl. A few. <laughs> oh my god, it's so cute for an Eldritch horror. The cat cursorily peeks around the armchair. Eyes you curious. You smile and scoop it up, holding it out in front of you. You found me! You win! The cat looks confused but pleased with your praise. This time you put it on the armchair so it can't see your hiding spot this easily. Dash over the kitchen, hiding behind the counter. It takes a little longer this time for the cat to find you. The same it does, it startles you by hopping down in your lap from the countertop above. Whoa, found me again. Okay, you win, you win. Word with little scratches behind the ear and under the chin. It leans into your touch. Okay, why don't you give it a try? Go stand in the middle of the living room. The cat following you. Make a show of covering your eyes and turn around. Turn around and see if the cat is gone. Hmm. You catch on quick. Not many places available in your apartment for someone your size to hide. But without opposable thumbs need to open and close holes, doors in the hall, the cat will have limits to fair game. Where to look? Oh! Hmm. Holy. Nothing. Not sure what you're expecting, with all the doors still closed. Still we're in a hall for a cat to hide. Living room. Under the coffee table. Living room's pretty sparse when it comes to furniture. Kitchen. Grab a chair, check on top of the fridge. Even open the cupboards on the floor, just in case a cat wants to squeeze inside. Nothing. Kitchen is for making food, not playing games. Couldn't find a cat anywhere. You start getting a little worried when you hear a soft sound coming from. Oh, I checked there first, you bastard. Head to the hall and listen again. Coming from the bedroom, but walk down the hall to your room and gingerly open the door. Gah! Cat trots around your legs, meowing. Disappointed. Perhaps you're apparently subpar seeking skills, but lift the cat into your arms, look at your bedroom door. How'd you get in there? You know the door was closed, right? Cat wiggles out of your hold, runs down the hall. You fall to see it sitting in the middle of the living room. Upon seeing you, the cat promptly turns around. Wants to take a turn at seeking. You're about to indulge it by hiding around the corner again when... Did the power go out? Wait for your eyes to adjust to the darkness. Notice the cat hasn't moved an inch. Was it scared? Are you... What? For some reason, your heart starts beating faster. You consider going over to the cat, but when you do... The thought makes you feel like your life is in danger. You need to hide now. Hmm. I haven't mentioned the bathroom yet.
Okay, the door outside's going to be locked, isn't it? Whoa! Look at the door and see several more locks over it than you know you have. Peek over at the cat. It's not looking at you, but feel a wave of disappointment practically pouring into you. Almost like a warning. Back away from the door. Feeling slowly subsides, letting you breathe again. Feeling you can't won't appreciate your lack of effort. Anyway, like how you're getting any closer to it. Stop messing around and find a place to hide. Careful okay, closing the door behind you. Place to hide in your room is your closet. Risk another hiding spot. T Sure. Lock the doors quietly as you can before lunging into the closet and sliding the door shut. As soon as you've secured yourself inside the closet, sudden shift through the entire apartment as if something can sense you're as ready as you'll ever be. As if it can sense that you're ready to be hunted. A horrible chill runs down your spine as you realise that's what this game has become. This isn't a simple game of hide and seek anymore. It's a game of hunted by a predator as prey. It never really mattered where you chose to hide though. As if to answer your question, you hear a loud slam in the bedroom door. You just managed to hold back from making a startled noise and sound. Your heart rate kicks up again, making it feel harder to breathe quietly. Hard to breathe in general. Tears fill your eyes as you cover your panting mouth with your shaking hands and your nose. Crying out with your hands over your mouth, trying to smother the choked sounds leaking out of you. You slide down the wall at the back of your closet into a heap on the floor. You flinch harshly as the sound of the door being ripped off its hinges, followed by a loud crash against the wall on the other side of the room, like a door had been blown away. The sounds that almost follows, it's almost too much to bear. You can't. A single sob escapes through your nose. You squeeze your eyes shut in defeat at how loud it sounds in the quiet of the room. Not much point in hiding it anymore anyway, is there? You just think you'll put whatever energy you have left into listening for footsteps. Even as you emotionally shut down, but you hear nothing. 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 Then... Something slides open the closet. You've curled in on yourself. Knees up. Back curved forward. Head down, mouth covered, eyes shut tight, so tight it hurts. You don't want to look, you don't want to look, but that's what it's been waiting for. It won't end without this final act of cruelty, of making you look at it before it takes your life. So cruel. You just want this to be over, so you open your eyes. You see something glaring at you from the darkness beyond the closet door. It looks disappointed. The moment before you draw your last breath, you almost consider apologising for being such unworthy prey. Guess your hiding skills were just as subpar as your seeking skills. Da 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 well, this, what? What's up? What? I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. I was just so tired of everything. Not you. Never you. But I couldn't be the person you deserve. Could ever hope to be. Couldn't ever hope to be. You were so amazing. Smart, talented and independent. You shined. But in comparison, I... Damn it. So stupid. So worthless. But when it approached me, it didn't tell me that it wanted me. It needed me. Maybe that's what I wanted all along. 
wanting can be so fleeting, but to be needed. There's nothing I wouldn't give to have someone tell me that I mattered to them, that they needed me. You're walking, right, of course. It's the first time in a while that you felt like going out, and you're actually glad that you did. So that's all stuff we're seeing. Okay, so we're, we're back to we're back to this. And we're gonna pet the kitty. All those ended in death. Cleaning was a bad move. Uh, let's watch a movie. I guess I'm the only one I've not done. Not tired enough to nap. Too lazy to get started in your chores. So you decide to watch a movie. Dress in your favourite pyjamas. Make some popcorn with a super amount of butter and head over to your armchair. Discover that the cat is napping on it. You frown a little in thought. The couch isn't the best angle for optimal TV viewing pleasure. Then move it. And you don't feel like pushing it around or having it back up later. The only option you have left is to sit on the floor. Remove the cat, reclaim your floor. Just sit on the floor. Sit on the floor, the cat's a guest after all, and you pride yourself on being a good host. Well, at least you would if you'd ever had any guests before. Grab a blanket, some pillows, make it comfy nest in front of the armchair. Pop a random movie from your collection. You can tell instantly it's one of your favourite horror films. You've seen it a few times, but it never you've seen it a few times already, but it never fails to get your blood pumping. A few minutes in, and you're already invested, getting reacquainted with the story and characters. Scares won't come until later, but for some reason you feel like something is watching you from behind. You know it's nothing. You feel compared to check. Peek over your shoulder. Gah. Only jump at your skin, jostling a few pieces of popcorn out of the bowl in your lap. Cat's awake and looking right at you. <sighs> Take a calm and bear for governing for your heart, nearly lurching out of your chest, and immediately feel foolish. It was just the cat, of course. It was so quiet you forgot it was right behind you. Even though it's the whole reason you're sitting on the floor. You shakily pick up the remote, intended to rain some of the parts you missed. As soon as you press the rain button, TV shuts off. You blink confused. Nothing else turned off. The kitchen's dim light was still on. The digital clock was still going, and the movie player was still rewinding. The power clearly didn't go out, so why? You feel a chill run down your spine as you catch the cat's reflection in a dark screen. It's still looking at you? Cat stare. Silly. Cats stare. Silly. It's kind of their thing, right? And you're a new addition in its life. Of course they're going to study you closely to see if you're trustworthy. Mentally reassure yourself and turn the TV back on. TV's on, but the movie isn't. What's playing on the screen? It's... It's you? You watch yourself frown on the screen as you follow your brow in tandem. Like footage of you in real time. Like you're being recorded. Feel the familiar sensation in your mind, focusing on a small details to avoid the bigger picture of your current situation. Avoiding the questions of how this is happening. Of who or what is doing this and why. Suddenly your mirrored self smiles and waves at you. On its own. You don't wave back, too stunned to move. Rude. The you on screen doesn't seem to mind, though. It stands out, walks out of the frame, and... <gasps> Terrified yell rips out your mouth before you can think to stifle it. On the screen, in the chair, is the cat. But it's wrong. It's become a large, swollen mass of black fur. It's twitching pulse out rhythmically with its slow, almost methodical breaths. Its mouth is a yawning entrance to a black abyss, framed by a set of teeth that look very, very sharp. Glowing eyes bulge all over its body. It's still looking at you. Doesn't even acknowledge your on screen persona as they walk back into frame and pet it almost lovingly. Then, you inside your seat, inside the TV touches one of the cat's fangs. You flinch, with a sudden sharp pain in your palm. You look down, and sure enough, your hand is bleeding. 
You're not particularly fond of blood, but for some reason, the sight of it leaking out you sends another chill down your back. A thought, clear and terrible, flash in your mind. It's not just a mutated cat on TV that's watching you, is it? Don't look behind, don't look behind, don't look behind, don't look behind. Don't look behind. Watch helplessly as your own on-screen self smiles and nods at you, almost encouragingly, as if they stand in front of the cat's gaping jaws, look into the dark depths, as and as you're torn between the horrifying realisation of what's about to happen, and the gripping wonder of what they see looking back at them from the deep, deep darkness, they jump in. Darkness is sudden. Darkness is a sudden presence all around you, pressing in, holding you down. Somehow you feel weightless. Can't tell if you're falling, but it doesn't feel like you're laying down or standing either. You feel warm, then cold. You feel everything and nothing. You feel nothing. Alright. I think this is the only one I don't know. Yeah, it's not like water, you think. Quick wash is all the way to go, right? So I do everything at once. Fill in the tub deep with soap, bubbly water. Quick dunk here, short scrub in there, rinse and dry. Cat won't even know what hit it before everything's over. The open door, click the tongue, beckoning the cat. It quickly scampers in, curious to the new available setting. Close doors, won't be able to run it and make a mess in the apartment. Stealing yourself, you roll up your sleeves. Left the cat, get it over to the tub. The plan is already compromised, the cat struggles to your hold. Probably should have held it so it couldn't see the water. It scratches your arms. You wouldn't be happy about the water. Didn't think it this irate. Still, as mad as it will be at you for a little while, you know this is for the best. Deep scratch in your bicep startles you, making you drop the cat into the tub. Kitty! Cat doesn't re-emerge hissing and yelling like you thought it would. You rush over and dunk your arms beneath its open surface, reaching out for the cat. But if it bumped its head and blacked out, it would drown. But you don't find the cat. Instead, you watch as the water starts to darken. At first, you think it's the dirt from the cat and feel a little vindicated about your decision, but... Water darkens further and further. It looks like you filled your tub with black ink rather than water. Even the soap bubbles are translucent obsidian now. Something's not right. But as you have this thought... You just... Felt something tugging you from under the water. Try and pull away, but your arm won't bulge. Whatever it is, pulls you closer towards the water. Okay, so this will be the thalassophobia one. Fear of drowning. I am very anxious. I hate water. Okay, you try to use your free hand to release the drain plug. When you dunk your other arm in the water without thinking, it's grabbed too. Both hands restrained. You can't get any leverage to force yourself free. Help! Dragged into the murky waters of the tub. Dragged down and down, further down style. Much further than it should be possible for your bathtub. You can't breathe. You think you can't see either, but as you draw your final breath, Kitty, you think you see what's been pulling you down. Something resting deep, deep down below. Something waiting for you. Bath hater. Okay, am I going to get any special intros? Nah, it seems like that's going to be it. Well, I'm going for my version of the good ending. There we go. The cat has been pet. And now I am going... Wait, actually, no, there was another option for nap. Or movie? Oh, wait, there was one. Actually, there was another option for cleaning the apartment. Uh, let's try to catch the cat. Are you supposed to finish cleaning up? The little imp is making you menace. No, you know the cat's the culprit. You can start locking up in the bathroom, at least until you clean the rest of the apartment. Just doesn't seem fair when you don't actually have any proof. You need to investigate further. You need proof. Not just for the sake of your son to do, but more importantly, for the sake of cleanliness. You start to clean again, peek behind you, catching mere glimpses of the paw here and there. Of a paw here or a tail there. As with earlier, you rush to the back of the living room. Cat's still sleeping. 
You want to play cat? Let's play. This time you decide to lay a trap. One your feeling friend won't be able to resist. You take the kitchen ale encounter, give it the works. Glistening by the time you're done. It's so clean, you drop kick anyone who even thought of eating off of it. Perfect trap for your little cleaning saboteur. You bustle innocently, innocently, as you leave the room, hide around the corner of the entry hall. From that angle you're at, you have a perfect view of the cat and the ale encounter. There's no way you won't catch the culprit at it now. If it really is the cat, maybe you'll give it as a treat and as an apology for your suspicions. If it isn't the cat. But as if but as you deliberately deliberate if you did stop by the grocer's board to get some fish, the cat stats too. Fart. Its back was rising and falling evenly moments ago, and now rippling small tremors like an agitated wave in the black sea. It's shuddering. It's bubbling. It's bulging. It's bulging. Pop! Birth! You keep in disbelief as another cat bursts out of the still, still sleeping feline you've taken home with you. I feel certain that's not how cats give birth, but more importantly. You watch cat number two shakes itself before leaping onto the counter, rolling around the top of it, leaving far and dream in its wake. You probably should have given it a bath earlier. You feel that your mind is lagging behind the reality of the discovery you've just made. You don't seem capable of thinking beyond smaller observations. For example, will the hows and whys of what you're witnessing still elude you? The more pertinent question that strikes you is the original cat is still sleeping. And the, clo the cloned cat is busy making yet another mess. Then with all the other clones, where are they, all the other clones? Suddenly, two cats look directly in perfect unison. Eyes pin you at the spot with their intensity. You realise with the familiar sinking feeling being watched from behind, they're not the only ones looking at you. Slowly turn around. More kitties for me! Back in the hall behind you, floor to the ceiling, is a living, breathing, writhing wall of cats, of clones, all piled on top of each other. The glowing golden eyes of every cat an undulating wall of pure black fur, where every single eye is trained on you. Out of fear and sheer desperate need to distance yourself from this blight on reality and order, you take a simple step back. And in response, the wall just breaks. Cats are stampeding all over you. It'll be kind of cute. I feel soft paws weren't hiding shirt claws as sharp as knives. Try to protect yourself, but there's too many of them. Blood leaks steadily from your scratches. You feel dizzy. What little strength you have as you turn your head and watch as the cats tear through the carpet and upholstery. Knock over vases and dishes and lamps, clot the walls. It's going to take forever to clean this up, you think. Maybe you'll tack it again later, right after you take a short nap. With an annoyed sigh, you breathe your last breath. <laughs> okay, where we go? Where we go? Where we go? 15 out of 40. Hmm. So still one with a kitty I haven't done. Yes. Give me a minute, give me a minute, give me a minute, get her. On you come. Ah, reclaim my throat. This is probably it, isn't it? Pick up the cat, place it on the floor. It's upset with you. Try to pet it as an apology. Dodges your hand and scampers away. Shrug, but on a random move, we're nestling into your chair. Horror film that you love to heckle from beginning to end. Not an endless string of pointless jump scares. Did the writers not know the meaning of the word subtle? What was that in the bathroom? The cat must have gotten a medicine cabinet or knocked something over. Calming your thundering heart with a deep breath, you pause moving up to investigate. <coughs> Whoa! Cat dashed between your legs from the hall. Clean the scene only makes you look guiltier, you know. You're even more reluctant to see the damage. You just want to relax and watch a bad horror movie. Into the bathroom and turn the light. Just as you thought, stuff in your medicine cabinet scattered on the tails. You sigh. At least none of it's broken or damaged. Crouch down, pick everything up. Did the door just close? Did you bump into it when you crouched down? 
And at least the cat can't come in and make more of a mess. The lights. Then you just replace the bulbs. They weren't faulty, were they? You don't remember how to. You never remember to hold on to your seats for a situation like this. You doubt you'll ever get your money back. You stand up. Shake the pain in your knees from crouching and open the medicine cabinet. Place everything back with a belong, making sure nothing's missing. Close the door, and oh, hello. You jump back, slamming against the wall, covering your mouth. You look back up the mirror in the medicine cabinet door and see your reflection. Nothing. What the hell? Something was. You know you saw something just now. You know you did. Right? <laughs> you saw something. You definitely saw something. Ma! Rush out in the room, slam the door behind you without looking. Enter the hall and. No. Hey, kitty. Shield yourself with your arms and. Nothing. Nothing again. Peek through your fingers and see. Just your hallway. You don't feel very good. You need to sit down. You have to make way back to the dark living room. And I want trying not to overwhelm your sense any more than you already have. You should watch something a little more light-hearted, or just lay down. You don't know. It's a little hard to think. You just need to sit down. Stumbling forward, you reach your chair. But... <laughs> oh, nothing at all. Just a cat. Sitting back in your chair again, looking up at you cautiously. But it's enough. Your heart lurched so harshly out of the mixture of fear and anticipation that it completely gives out. Your eyes roll up into your skull. You feel yourself falling back. Dead before you hit the ground. <laughs> Real subtle. Okay, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. Okay, well that's going to do it for me anyway. I don't want to do the ones where you don't take the cat home because, I don't know, there's just something about me that's like real pedantic. You tell me not to do it and I'm like, but no, I want to. But yeah, this is a definitely a cute and not at all evil horror cat. Do you want to do the rest of the stuff? Like be a heartless arsehole and not take care of the cat that's trying to kill you? I'll leave the link in the description. You can play the rest of the game yourself. If I got enough likes in this one though, I will do the rest of it. Aha, doing the old YouTuber bait shite that everyone always does. See if I get five likes, I'll do the other endings. That'll do for now. Good luck. Take it easy.